Oh man, yes, hello world, what is up? Welcome to Build, I'm your host Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Uh, the latest entry in the CW Extended Sexy Archie universe, uh, Katie Keene is an incredibly fun departure from the murder capital of the world that is Riverdale, uh, and follows an eclectic group of friends determined to realize their dreams in where else but New York City. Joining me now, he plays one of said friends, Jorge, AKA Ginger Lopez. I'm super excited to talk with him. Please make some noise, crazy amount of noise. Back to the show, the great Johnny. Beauchamp, come on, do hey it! Hey guys, up. make some noise. Uh, Johnny, congratulations on this awesome show. You guys just wrapped season one, I believe, right? Yeah, like, yeah, we actually just wrapped like on Friday. Day. Like we we like had the premiere on Thursday, so we like stopped production, went, watched it, like you know, did a little bit of like live tweeting and stuff, and then. Then it was right back to work. Then it's back to work. <laughs> yeah, and we I went back the next day as well. It's phenomenal. And I read somewhere. Keep me honest. Are you already renewed for season two? Is he... yeah. They, well, they that's what I've heard. A soft pickup. So, uh, okay. They, they bought thirteen more scripts already, but that was even before we premiered. So we were so we were you feeling. Knew, you knew you were coming back. So even though you were rapping, you were like, it's, it's not bittersweet. It's just fi it's fine. I'll be back here. Yeah. It was a nice hug. Yeah. It was kind of like okay, we're doing this, but it's not like cries and tears and like where's my life gonna be? It's like oh, you know, I think we you know we're gonna. You know, this could be going. So it was a really nice way to finish out the, the run. Uh, people, since the uh, premiere last week, people have been responding to it in big ways. People love this show. It is, and I, I said in my intro, I said it's so much fun, and I really enjoy it. And I think uh, you are kind of like the breakout favorite right now amongst oh, fans. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. And I thought you were fantastic. I'm excited to talk to you all about it. Um, but before we get into that, how has this ride been so far? How are you? How's your Let me. I am so good. I'm feeling so good. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember. Writings on the wall. Anybody? Yeah. DC, Dusty's child? No, uh, I <laughs> I couldn't be better, honestly. Uh, I've been doing a lot of these kind of uh, interviews, and everyone wants to ask like how everything is. I hope I'm speaking enough into the mic. Uh, it was I've never I've never really had doubts before. I, I wasn't that guy with the backup plan. I was like, this is my lane. This is what I'm gonna do. You know, this is how it's gonna be. And it wasn't until 2018 things got really, really, really rocky, yeah. and I kind of lost everything that I had really worked for towards for the last 20 years. So it kind of, I had to take stock and do you know, I was working almost a year ago to, to the day, like just down the street there at the Cornelia street cafe with all my friends from high school. That's the only reason I didn't get fired because my friends were my boss and um, the restaurant closed and it was been there since like 77. So we we're like, wow, end of an era. And I was like, wow, I, I don't have a job. I don't really have an apartment. I was living with my boyfriend at the time. And I was like, I don't have anything. I don't have a bank account. Like this is looking bleak. So I was like, I gotta do something. I put in a, a, a thing for Delta Airlines. I was gonna, I was like, well, get to travel. Yeah. And then I got the script for Katie Keene. Three different people actually sent it to me and they wanted to put me out for it. So it kind of came to me from like three different avenues and so, I was like, oh, okay, this maybe this this could be it. So I got super into it. That's amazing, and I don't I don't want to spend too much time on on this other part. I want to talk about this a lot, but there is something I'm fascinated about within your journey. You were here uh, not too long ago. That's right. A film, right? Uh, called Stonewall. Absolutely. Which had a rough go. We uh, did. We did, man. And 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 that's all we need to say about that. The thing that fascinates me is that following that film is it, it had a heavy impact on you and as a professional, and a lot of things changed, and you kind of had to start from scratch. I 100% did. Which is incredible to me yeah. because that was a big film. And any actor who would land a gig in a big film, like, this is it. It's going to turn things around and we're going to start doing big gigs. And then all of a sudden to have it turn around the other way is terrifying. It, it was. And I and you know what the, the worst part about it was? That all aside, you know, we make the film. It go, lives in the world. That has nothing to do with us. We... We made that film with the utmost love and respect. Um, I, especially for me, it was such a big moment. And I felt like I really got to represent for my community, but it just was in, in press and how it went down. Unfortunately, people didn't know that there were like queer actors acting in the movie, that I was of color, that I'm from New York City, I'm queer, you know, I'm from the block, me and Jenny. Uh, <laughs> and so it just went really badly. And unfortunately, it kind of became like a scarlet letter on my, on my lapel. But I have to say, like, it's one of the most favorite things I've ever done. Like, I still really love my character in it. I'll never forget that experience working with Roland Emmerich was like getting my master's in filmmaking. Like, he really taught me how to play to camera and, and how to do that. And I, and I think it, I wouldn't have gotten Penny Dreadful if I wasn't working on Stonewall at the time. And Penny Dreadful was a huge achievement for me also. I mean, geez, like, I can't, I can go on about those gowns. Like, it was just <laughs> such an amazing show. So unfortunately, it didn't play out like that. And 
thank God Penny Dreadful came out before because I wouldn't have, there, I would have just not had anything. Well, and I think, uh, you know, a million conversations have been had about that film and all that stuff. I only brought it up, not to pour salt in a wound, but because I think it speaks to your resilience, your character, just as a person, and just your 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 talent and your level of skill, and the fact that you, you stuck it out, and you started from scratch, and now here you are, this incredible role on this awesome show, and I just I just wanted to commend you Thank for that. Thank you so much. I'm pulling through. I think it's an amazing story. I, I really appreciate it. very inspirational. It. Okay, so we fast forward. We're at that point now. You get the scripts. You're seeing this, these stories. You see this character. What are you thinking? Oh, my God, I have to do this i couldn't breathe uh i didn't really eat for a couple days i just couldn't eat anything like i was just looking at the script and reading the script and when it got to the part of the number yeah. like ginger's first number i was just kind of like i don't get precious about things like i audition for stuff all the time it's our job i don't get it move on and it's usually one of my friends gets it if it's casting in new york it's like oh it's anthony oh it's you know right, it's right. really cool so we're like it's in the fam i don't know if i would have recovered if i didn't this get this part. You. you were perfect for this and you had to get it. That's how I felt. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to do anything I can mm -hmm. to make this happen. And so I even pulled like a little gimmicky stunt like when I was in... <laughs> Tell me the gimmicky stunt. Okay, it worked uh, out. We can talk about it now. So I went into casting and it was at Bowling Misha and these were wonderful girls and they were like very business and ready and like there was a lot of boys waiting, you know? So I went in there, she received me, she was nice. We uh, did the scene and she was like, okay, that's great. And then we did a little bit of a little song. Okay, that's great. Oh, okay, awesome. When you're not really asked to do it a couple times and you don't get an adjustment, you immediately think, like, it's done. It's gone. They don't want it. Because, you know, we think that even if you are perfect, they're going to give you something to work with, right? So on my way out, I was like, oh, girl, you got to do something. You cannot let this go. L.A. needs to see this tape. You have to stick out. So I had been listening to, you know, my music or whatever, and I there's a, there a Nicki Minaj song that it's probably her most PC song that she has, and it's on her first record. Uh, and I felt like it really encompassed the pilot, not just Jorge, but the pilot. And so I was like, you know, I know this kid's like a street kid. You know, he's from New York City, he's from Washington Heights, he's Latin. I feel like he's got some swag on him. Would you mind if I did a rap? And she was like, what? And I was like, you know, just if you like it, you can add it to the packet. Like, let's just, you know, whatever. And it was just like a time thing. So like, I kind of, I really threw it at her. And she said, okay, go for it. And I did like 16 bars of Moment for Life. And she was like, wow okay, and she put it on my packet. And so that went straight to LA, and LA, like I was the only audi boy who auditioned who had this like weird pop of like, you know, whatever. And that could have gone really badly to the actors watching like that. That was like a 50-50, you it's know. It's called a risk, it's called a big swing yeah. for a reason, yeah. But it ended up working in my favor, and when I got to LA a couple days later, they were like, so we heard you do this rap. And um, it ended up making it into the show. So I guess I did a pretty good job. It's pretty incredible. Showing love to Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> what a great story. How, um, I, I was reading a, an interview you'd done prior, and you'd, uh, you'd done drag, but not professionally, you right. said, right? So I'm curious, when it came time uh, to sort of find Ginger and figure out who Ginger was, how, how collaborative was it? Did you have uh, certain looks in mind, things that like you wanted to touch on? What, what was the process like of figuring out Jorge's uh, Ginger and like the, the two together? Well, the, I have to say, this has been the most collaborative process I've had like in acting, on com in commercial like uh, television and film. This is immense. I mean, I came in with like books and looks and ideas, and they're like, okay. Um, the great part about Ginger was that they were really adamant about Ginger being like a baby queen. She's just starting out, so they didn't want to hit all right. Like, she's not RuPaul Drag Race ready yet. Right. She's just starting out. So that actually gave us like a lot to play with. And you can kind of trace like how she gets better as the season goes. Like you'll notice her eyebrows get better. You'll notice like the wigs get better, the contour. Like we were very conscious of like what to doing just enough. And so she starts very old school drag, you know, in a, in a sequent gown and a bob. And then she kind of elevates herself and she starts to kind of really take from other queens. And, and we have a bunch of really great drag queens on the show, one of which is the amazing Head of Lettuce, who is like a New York City icon, right? Yeah. Probably a national treasure. Shangela comes on our show, who I'm like, I just can't believe like I work with Shangela. We had so much fun talking shit back, you know, stage and stuff. It was so there are all these these um these kind of like drag icons coming in and out of the show, and Ginger's really She's like a sponge. She's sucking up all of it. And let me tell you, Shanti gave me some tricks. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. 
Hallelujah. Can you can you divulge? Like, what does that conversation look like? Do you go and ask? Does Shangela come to you and say, "Look, I see what you're doing, but I know how I can help you"? Like, how does that relationship? No, Shangela form? was very respectful. Can yeah. Understand? We were just kind of like friends, and then I I straight up asked her. I was like, "Sis, like, how you do? What about this?" And so she gave me some advice about wigs, um, about like how to keep them on and like what kind of materials to use. And I was like, "Oh wow, I didn't know that." I'm not trying to divulge all her secrets, you know. Of course not. I don't want to give away the eleven herbs and spices. Right, I'm just right, right. curious. But it was cool. Like it was just so, we had such a great like vibe from the beginning and so I would just like ask and she would she would give it to me I mean DJ is he and Shang she's she to me she's Shanji um she just would give me tips and it was really cool and like there was you know it was always like if one of us kind of tripped up the other one would kind of pick it up and stuff we had a really great scene where we're like fighting dancing and voguing at the same time it was really cool I hope you guys see it. Is it's it really scary cool. when you haven't uh, when you haven't sort of engaged in drag professionally, and now here you are, sort of in this position to 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 be this person to, to represent this community? Is that scary? Is there a pressure there, uh, or, or are you kind of ready for that? Uh, I think I should be scared, um, but I'm not. Um, I have no, I haven't I've I won't say that I participated in the ballroom scene or the drag scene, but I always call myself like ballroom adjacent. Right. I've always gone and watched. I'm not a, in the houses, but my friends are. And I, I feel like I'm really well-versed in the world. Like, I've been in the world of it since I was a kid. Like, before, drag was really kind of, it was kind of a hobby vocation as opposed to, like, now a rock star moment. Um, it was always really close to my heart, and I think that's why I got, I always get cast as drag queens, because I have a way into them. They have souls to me, and they're people. They're not just clowns, right? That's, like, a part of them. But I think I've got a way into that, and that's why I think I, I excel in that kind of, uh, that those kinds of roles. Um, I probably should be nervous, but I just, I'm just super excited. Like, I'm excited to actually participate in some way. I know that this is a commercial TV show, and I'm not really a drag queen, but I looked up to drag queens growing up, and I love them so much. I mean, drag culture is, like, very adamant in my household since I was a kid. I mean, since my aunt took me to Tu Wong Fu to, like, stick it to my mom. Uh, like, I, you know, it's just been such a part of me, and, and I... I would, I'm not going to be too presumptuous to say that like I'm giving back, but like I'm I'm humbly excited to participate in it. Very well said, very eloquently put. Um, you know, there's a moment in the show uh, in the first episode, and Jorge says like the powers that be don't want you know somebody me. like me. They don't want me exactly. And I'm curious how much of that you know feeling so connected to this world, how much of Jorge's journey kind of mirrored your own. Yeah. Brother, let me tell you. This is, it's it, the line between Johnny and Jorge is just getting thinner and thinner. And it's probably, well, I also think that, like, the writers are listening to us. Like, sure, that's part of it. We're mic'd and stuff, so if we're, like, if I'm, like, talking to Lucy or whatever, like, they're probably hearing these tidbits because it's just, it's coming more and more in. But the pilot, they never met me. They don't know anything about me. And it was so strange to see yourself on the page. Yeah. And the one place where, like, Jorge and me or Ginger and I are, are different is I don't know if I do have the gumption to look casting in the eye and and tell them uh, give them a piece and yeah. say who I am and what they're missing out on that was really really ballsy and I'm really inspired by that and it may bode well and it may bode not so well <laughs> um you'll have to stay tuned yeah. but I, I I'm hardly the first person to, to think those words and I'm hardly the first person to like have that moment you know as an out queer artist of color um and I'm super you know I'm tiny it's slim pickings, you know, and everybody want, has these ideas. And I like, I tried to be, an, uh, I wanted to be a chameleon. Like, I present myself like this, so you guys see me like, this is Johnny, but I'm an actor, I'm a canvas, I can do many things. But they don't want you to do many things. They don't want you to transform, not until you're at a certain level. They want you to just walk in as the character. And so I found that really hard and... It's, I, you know, I didn't work for a really long time. When there's so much of yourself on the page and you connect so deeply, is it harder to, to be vulnerable because now you're not sharing a character with the world, you're sharing Johnny? Yeah. Um, I guess I, I'll reserve that that's like case by case, but in this case specifically, it was really freeing. I felt a big responsibility. And, you know, I'm saying this to, like behind the who's who of Broadway dancers. Yeah. I mean, they were all handpicked. There were no auditions. Kelly Devine, our incomparable choreographer and, like, my new life coach, uh, handpicked the creme de la creme, and she insisted that we shoot on a Monday so that we can get all the best dancers. Yeah. And that was really a gift. And so I'm saying this in front of all of these people who live this every day, who, you know, they, and I'll know, what somebody even said to me, he's like, you know, it's kind of like you're speaking for all of us. And that was, I was like, whoa. Um, so that felt 
good. It kind of gives me that extra. Um, I was nervous as all hell that day. I mean, that was the that was the first thing we shot. Really? Yeah. That was the first that thing? dance sequence in the Broadway theater. We yeah. shot that actually out of town, like up in um by maybe Montclair or something, because all the theaters were booked. I mean, it was the middle of the season, so we couldn't actually get a Broadway theater. Um, and I was just so terrified, and I was like, wow, what a way to jump in the pool. Yeah. I, one of the things I love about that moment is, it, you know, it's such almost like a superhero moment. where, like, You know what I mean? Where, like, Jorge, uh, in this alter ego, like, becomes himself, really. Like, and is brave and stands up and says something. And it, and it just feels really awesome. Ha as that line has blurred and started to thin, has some of that come back into your life? Have you absorbed some of that confidence, yeah. some of that energy? I have to say, yeah. Um, I spent, we, we had talked about the period in my career where, like, things got a little rocky. And, um... I think I didn't uh, serve my piece, Stonewall. I feel like I didn't serve my career enough because I was too tied up in trying to be neutral. I wanted to prove that I was an actor and I could be whoever you wanted me to be. So I dressed really neutrally. I like I was in drag, um, or you know, as Angelique for nine months in Ireland. So I was kind of ready to have my facial hair back. I had like big facial hair, like bushy hair, and I would answer questions in like two sentences. Like I was trying to be very succinct and I wanted to be neutral and it didn't serve me is what, what I'm saying this to you guys now is that like cliche as it is not being myself actually didn't serve me I thought being myself was going to hurt me not being myself actually kind of made my career dry up no one was interested anymore it wasn't shiny yeah. and I and I did a disservice to the piece because you know although it went down how it went down um I still hope some people will go out and maybe Give it a give it a go because I think we've got a lot of good stuff going on in the film, and I'm very proud of it to this day. And um, Jorge and Ginger have kind of made me say, "Excuse my French, but get." And um, I'm being myself now. Like I'm dressed as myself today. Like these are my shoes. Like this is like it, I'm doing it, and I'm having a lot more fun doing it. Right. It's a little scary because I'm like, oh, maybe you know. I hope I. Less of a wall between you and the, the rest of the world. Yeah, it makes you a little vulnerable, but yeah. you know, at this stage in my life, I'm I'm facing it head on. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So very very cool. We're gonna go over to the audience in a little bit, get some questions from them. But I could not get through this without asking about working with the the awesome Daphne Ruben Vega. <laughs> oh my God. So like, what? Talk to me about the significance of family for Jorge and, and all that, and also just what was it like working with her? <laughs> like what that experience was. You and I are cut from the same cloth, my friend, because uh, most you will not believe this unless you really know me. But everyone who's known me since I was 12 years old knows that um, everyone has their one pillar, their lighthouse, their artist that they emulate, that they love. Daphne Rubin Vega has been mine. I've seen... Oh, what happened when you found out? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead. I'm so excited for you. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your story. I'll be over here if you need me. No, man. It's cool. Um, I don't know. I just find her to be the most original thing. She's an Afro-Latina, and she's so versatile. She sounds like no one else. She acts like no one else. She's been a part of two original... Pulitzer Prize winning companies, Rent and in the Tropics. She's also been in three Pulitzer Prize winning plays on Broadway, if you count Streetcar Named Desire. She, she's just so... Powerhouse. Incredible. I've seen her do Shakespeare. Yeah. She played the nurse in Romeo and Juliet with Elizabeth Olsen. Mm -hmm. And she did it like, the nurse can be kind of like a stock character, like an old lady. She played her like a sexy, sassy New Yorican nurse. And it was, it was brilliant. And so there had been some whispers, like in the writer's room, like Jorge has a big relationship with his mom, so we're casting the mom. And I looked at Michael Grassi and Roberto, and I said, there's only one person you have to cast Daphne and Vega. And they were like, ooh, <laughs> yeah, we love Daphne. And I was like, perfect, that's great. You need to cast Daphne and Vega. Um, and then they never talked about it again. Like I had kind of been like, so how's it going? They just like, so I, I thought that I was a little bit overstepping my bows and, right. and it wasn't going to happen. On the first day of the table read, there she is, and she just is like this. <laughs> because I was her super fan. Like, I used to go to all her shows as a kid. Like, I'd just be at the stage door. I'd sneak backstage. I snuck out of my, my house when I was in high school to go to her gig at midnight at the Zipper Factory. I've got pictures to prove it. <laughs> like, I just was, I just adore her. I adore her, her music that she makes on the side. And, like, so to have that moment to actually, it, that's a full circle moment for me. And we get on so well. It, it's amazing to meet your heroes. And it's even more amazing when your heroes are really generous to you yeah. and they're kind. Because I've met some heroes and, you know, they weren't so nice. Right. And I've met some like Daph and it's just, she's like my a, a second mom to me now. Now she texts me all the time and she's giving me advice. She's like, don't let the vampires get, you know, she's so amazing. 
How, how I know. Deep? Here's a question. How deep into your relationship with uh, Daphne Rubin Vega did you decide to reveal that you were the, the per, you were the super fan that snuck out to go see those shows? Did you tell her right away? Did you wait? Did you play it cool? Like, she how did you do knew it? who I was. Oh, she recognized she, me right away. Oh, yeah, dude. I wish we could run a clip of like one of her shows. She literally says my name in because I'm in the front row on YouTube. Like She knew exactly who I was, and she was like, it's you. Happening. We're working. She, and she yeah. said the kindest thing, you know. She said, you know, I always knew you were special. Like you, you were you were different. Cause there's a she's got a lot of fans. Yeah. But that I mean, that was just kind of her to say, yeah. you know. Yeah, what a moment. I know. I'm gonna text I, her after this. I'm just like, you came up at the interview. That's brilliant. Uh we got Kate, okay, how many we got? At least two. Perfect. We got a couple of questions in the room. We got microphones. Let's go ahead and do it up. First one hey. right here. How hey you Johnny, doing? how's it going? Thanks for being here and congratulations on the show. Thanks. Um you mentioned you're a New Yorker and I was Born wondering with the show being set here and you getting to work here, what's that like getting to bring that to life? It's the best. It's the best. Like I feel like I get to be, I get to represent for the girls. I get to represent for my peeps, for the boys, for the kids. Um, I'm very proud Puerto Rican. My mother raised me very proud. I'm from the Bronx. I was born in Fordham. Um, I've lived upstate New York in suburbia, and I've lived in Manhattan. You know, I went to high school performing arts at PPAS, the New York State Hell's Kitchen. I'm a product of New York City, and I feel so honored that I'm constantly called to, to, to play, to be the vessel for these kind of, off kilter, wacky, queer characters from New York. I think there's an authenticity that comes from New York. I mean, there's very few of us that are born and raised from here now, because it's like a it's a destination city. Everybody comes here and creates here, but a few, you know, not too many of us stick around. And so it's been it's been the biggest gift to like, and in this year of my life, to kind of come back to this as my career, as my job, my sole purpose, in my hometown, as someone who's basically like a younger like Disney version of me, um, that's, the, that's been the biggest gift. I'm looking at a picture of Monet Exchange right now. Monet and I went to the same high school. And I remember, yeah, I remember them singing, like our Dream Girls had just come out the movie, and so there would be like sing-offs in the hallway. And Monet has the most amazing voice. Like I wonder, I have to, wow. have to run that's into him awesome. and say hi. Uh, um, thank you so much for your question. Can I do, I wanna do one more. We got one more, we've got a microphone. There you are, hi, hello. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. So obviously fashion is a huge part of the show. Um, what were some of the favorite things that you got to wear and how do they affect your performance on the show? Well, uh, uh, my performance is like really, I, I always say I need my shoes. Like I, I build from the ground up. So whatever shoes I'm in, that really dictates like how I'm gonna move and stuff. Um, my favorite out, there is this one outfit, man. It's so cool. And it's it's just for a second, really, in, in the season. But it was kind of like this hybrid between Lady Gaga and Dolly Parton. This, like, country, like, music little sequin number. And, like, they added this really cool, like, DMV tag, name tag fringe on it. Which, I'm just give a queen fringe and she'll give you a twirl, honey. Uh, and so I really I get to, like, dance in it a little bit. But, like, I didn't get to wear it as much as I want. I wanted to, like, do a whole number around that look because it was just so cool. Our costume designer, Jen Rogan, is unbelievable. And the stuff that she can come up with on the fly is kind of remarkable. And every episode calls for so much stuff. And especially if it's made by Katie, it's got to be made in-house. And Katie makes everything. So they are, like, going blind sewing these costumes. And it's, we're just really lucky to have such an amazing team. You ever just accidentally try to walk off and go home with one? Just like, oh, or two. oh I forgot to take it off. I guess I'm, oh, whoops. <laughs> I will say Jorge wears a lot of ASOS, which is good. Go. They, they, like, have my size and stuff. So I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> Um, th congratulations again, man. It's thank been you. so awesome having you back on the show. Uh, this show is fantastic. You're fantastic. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being a great audience, hanging out with us, those that tuned in live. It's great to have you as well. Uh, Katie Keene, it premiered last week. It's Thursdays on The CW. You can catch it in the app. You can watch it uh, when it airs. Either way, just watch it. It's such a joy. It'll bring you joy. I guarantee you that. It's a fun show. It's a fantastic show. Uh, one more time, buddy. Crazy amount of noise for the one and only Johnny Beauchamp right here. Thanks, man. Up.